hello to everyone from the swamp. I forget what the name is, but a swamp in Louisiana in the autumn. I never thought about swamps actually celebrating autumn. I think it's great, but what we're going to do is um, a student sent me a question and I thought it was a terrific question, so I'm going to answer it. And I agree with the student that this can be a real problem. Notice she worked this part correctly. This was not a problem. Let's go over it. She found that the vertex of this quadratic trinomial function is negative 3, 4. And that the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3, as it always will be when you're dealing with a function. Now the minimum value is 4 because this is a cupped up parabola. Now the thing is we're supposed to graph. The easiest points to graph or the easiest point to graph. We already know the vertex, but the easiest point to graph is the y intercept. But look at this. It's just a little bit too big. It's up here. We're not going to be able to graph it. Now that means we have to find another point. What point? Sometimes you have to just guess. So let's do that first. F of X equals X squared plus 6X plus 13. Okay, you're going to see in a minute that to graph these parabolas, there's an order to it. First, you have to graph the vertex. That's not a problem. We have the vertex. Plot the vertex, rather. Plot the vertex. Which is negative 3, 4. And then 2, we have to graph one other point. One other point. Point, and that point is usually the y-intercept. The problem, of course, is that 13 goes beyond the scale of the grid that we're using. So we have to find another point. Now, I am just guessing, okay? I'm just guessing that here we've got a cupped up parabola that's going to look something like that. It might be skinny, it might be fat, I don't know. And there's the vertex, and this vertex is located at negative three, four. Well, it looks to me like negative two or negative one or negative four or negative five would give me graphable um, points. So why don't I try negative one? They're all gonna be negative, but negative one is probably the easiest. Let's try that. And if that doesn't give us a small enough point, then we'll try something else. Negative one squared plus six times negative one plus 13. 
Okay, negative one squared is positive one. Plus negative six is minus six plus 13. Well, that's gonna give us one minus six is negative five plus 13. Negative five plus 13 is positive eight. And that is small enough to be able to graph. It's within the scale. That's what I mean by small. It's within the scale. And it's not a decimal. Thank goodness for that. So, the other point we're going to use is negative one, eight. And we're gonna see if that works. All right, now let's graph. Here's how you graph these. Whoop. Okay, you click here at the gray box, right there, click, and then I come over here. The first thing I have to do is tell my math lab what it is I want to graph. And if you hover the tool over each of these icons, it will tell you what you're going to graph. Well, we want to graph a parabola. So here's a vertical parabola tool, just what we want to, want to graph. So click. Now I've chosen parabola. Read the instructions up here on the yellow banner. Click the graph to plot the vertex. We have to graph that first, plot it first. So that's negative three, four. I'll come out here, negative one, negative two, negative three. One, two, three, four, right here. Negative three, four. And look at, look here. This will always show you what plot, what point you're plotting. So here I go back. And when that tells me I'm on negative three, four, not over here, not over here, but right here at negative three, four, I click. Now, don't raise your, your, um, your grapher. It, not graph or don't raise your mouse, leave it down. I'm going to go to the point negative one, eight. So I go back here to negative one and then up to eight. And I look and see and make sure I really am on negative one, eight and I click. Okay, for better or worse, an object is selected. You can delete it or move it with arrows or by dragging. All right, so you can make adjustments before you hit save, if you want to. I'm gonna hit save. And then I'm going to check my answer. This is the dangerous part. Woohoo! We did it. Okay, that's how you do this. Follow the order for parabolas in this section. All, it always depends on the section you're doing. My college algebra students right now are working on transformations, and the way you graph in transformations is completely different. So always follow the instructions given in the yellow banner. Okay, talk to you later, bye-bye.